Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Stranger Than Fiction News. Now, I came here to kick some ass, not to waste your time, so let's get started. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to part two of our series, Do We Live in a Matrix? Now, I'm not going to redo part one in part two, so if you miss part one, then you know what you need to do. Today, we're going to talk about how we actually plug into this matrix, into this constructed reality. If we are biological computers, then the obvious question is, are we computers that are on a network, or are we computers that are not on a network? How could we possibly attempt to answer that question objectively? Well, let us suppose that we are connected to a network for a second. I mean, it wouldn't be much of a matrix if we weren't connected to the network, would it? So if we are connected, that only leaves us with two possible connection types. Either we're connected via a cable or we are connected wirelessly. Now, since none of us have cables running into the wall, then we must be connecting wirelessly. And given that every little gadget out there seems to connect wirelessly these days, then why not us? But to make that argument stick, we need to show that we can actually transfer information to or from people wirelessly, right? That's how a network connection works. It's a way to transfer information via an infrastructure to or from computers that are connected. So if we can show that information can be transferred to or from people via non-traditional methods, then perhaps we're on the right track. So imagine that you could gain information, not from sight or sound or touch or smell or even taste, but by some other means that was directly inputted into your brain. That sounds impossible, doesn't it? Well, you haven't been watching the news lately. There's a whole lot of that going on. In fact, there's a whole spectrum of technology that does just that. Ever since the 1950s, we've been beaming thoughts, words, and even feelings into people's brains. Now, this technology has many names, such as silent sounds, audio spotlights, neurophones, synthetic telepathy, psychotronic weapons. Take your pick. This idea is old technology. It's not science fiction. It's stranger than fiction. And that's why we're covering it. And while these are all causes for concern, what it's telling us is that if we can wirelessly send information into people, there's nothing that rules out that people are transmitting as well. I mean, whoever heard of a cell phone that could receive calls but not make a call? Now, if you've never heard of synthetic telepathy or the lily wave or how cell phone signals are just carrier waves for something even more nefarious, then you're just going to have to do your own research on that. I certainly don't have the time to cover that in this broadcast. But there's definitely plenty of information out there on this very subject. But basically, what is going on here is that not only have people discovered that we do live in a matrix, they're trying to hack into this matrix. Hack the matrix. How original. Well, let's leave them to their own devices for the time being because here's what we really need to worry about. Here's how all of this fits into part one and how this is going to be fitting into part three of the series. So there's synthetic telepathy where people are beaming in ideas via mechanical means. Then there must be natural telepathy where ideas are traveling through the network via natural means. Well, what does that mean? And what is this network? What is this matrix? Well, the only thing we can really do here is describe what we don't know in terms of what we do know. Let us say that our internet is a little like this matrix that we live in, but that this matrix is really nothing like our internet. It's only fair to hypothesize that this matrix is light years ahead of our internet because we as biological computers are light years ahead of the technology that is currently here today. But if this matrix does have something in common with our internet, it must be the fact that it has networks and it has communication protocols. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, every computer connects to the internet via a network connection. This could be a home network, a corporate network, a private network, a public network. Big or small computers connect to a network and these networks connect to each other to form an internet. Now, that indeed is going to be an important idea when understanding how we as biological computers connect to this matrix of ours. But what we obviously have to understand is not only what network we're on, but also what kind of communication protocol is being used. We as computer users can only communicate to others if everybody is using the same program, the same communication protocol. If I'm on Skype and if you're on Twitter, we're not going to be able to talk to each other. Even if we're on the same network, even if we're in the same room, without the right program, we can't speak to one another on this network. And these are the pieces of the puzzle that I want to focus on. And you'll quickly see why here in a few minutes. Now, to unlock this mystery, we need something to start with, some thread to go on. 
And while the example I'm going to choose might seem rather abstract, and while there might be better examples out there, I'm going to use this one because I think it proves the point quite nicely. So here goes. Every so often, we'll hear of a case where somebody goes berserk and does something horrible, like a mass shooting or something, and when people ask them why they did it, they'll say something rather outlandish, like they were hearing voices that told them to do it. Now, our immediate reaction to something like that is to say that these people are crazy, and perhaps they are. But perhaps something else is going on. There have been tens of thousands of documented cases like this in recent history, which means there are hundreds of thousands of undocumented cases, where people have heard these sorts of voices but have just chosen not to act on them, perhaps. And the story is always the same in these cases. The voices said murder, death, kill, etc., etc., etc. So either there's like an epidemic of mass mental illness and, nothing, and nobody's saying nothing about it, or these people are tuning into something and they just don't know what they're tuning into. Now, if that's the case, then they're obviously not tuning into the love channel. These aren't happy thoughts they're tuning into. It's quite the opposite. And that's the point. If we know anything about this world, it's that it's a world of opposing forces, good versus evil, day versus night. And if we were to put this in terms of networks, then there must be a good network and then there must be an evil network. And perhaps this is the communication protocol. But these people must be tuning into an evil network somehow. Again, this is all very abstract, but we know that we're in a constructed reality, that it is possible for wireless connections between people and machines to occur, and that some people out there, that a lot of people out there, are hearing voices and they just don't know why. You know what this reminds me of? It, it reminds me of a lot of things, but it reminds me of those old DSL boxes that used to be out there where people all of a sudden would hear telephone conversations from a speaker inside the DSL box. Don't ask me how that happens or why there's even a, a speaker in the DSL box, but you didn't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out that you were listening into somebody else's phone call. Now, if we start connecting the dots here, then here's what becomes obvious. Some people are connecting to a dark network. They're not connecting to the love channel and they don't know why they're connecting to it. Like say you leave your Wi-Fi on on your phone and you just automatically connect to an open network somehow. These people are hearing voices and they can't explain where these voices are coming from. Kind of like when people used to hear conversations on their old DSL boxes. We all heard those conversations. We just didn't know where those conversations were taking place. Now, given that the messages are always the same, murder, death, kill, that is, this leaves only one possible conclusion. Somebody out there knows their voice is being heard by some unsuspecting victim or victims. Somebody out there is hacking the matrix either by mechanical means or by some other means. Probability would suggest that there's a little bit of this and a little bit of that going on. Meaning perhaps there are some psychological experiments going on out there via mechanical means and perhaps we're also dealing with a force or a network that is just naturally evil. Does that sound like a story you've ever heard of before where evil is trying to influence you into doing something evil? Well that sounds like a theme we've all heard over and over again. How many of you can picture a scene out of a movie or something where some guy has an angel on one shoulder? Shoulder and a devil on the other and both of them are whispering to the guy do this no don't do that what I'm getting at here is that we're computers on a network and on this network there are other networks some of them are good and some of them are bad and some of these networks are trying to hack into your network they're trying to scan your ports they're trying to get through your firewall you can absolutely bank on that so the question you should be asking yourself now as many of us have asked in the past and will continue to do so in the future are your thoughts your own how would you know could some of your thoughts be the product of a hack and what's even worse than that could your thoughts be used against you I suppose this goes back to the silent weapons for quiet wars doctrine but imagine for a second you are a good person and evil has it in for you that's just the way these things go it's good versus evil out there so imagine they're listening to your thoughts that they evil that is is able to hack into your matrix that they are able to hear where you are planning to go before you go there what you are planning to buy before you actually buy it impossible you might say well how would you know? Do you think a piece of spyware on your computer is going to say, hi, we're listening, we're tracking your keystrokes? Do you think it's going to say, go ahead, enter in your credit card details, everything's going to be okay? Of course not. The very best hacks are the ones you never hear about. Getting back to this good versus evil, say you're a good person 
And by the very nature of the game, evil has it out for you. Nothing personal. That's just the way it is. It's like gravity. It's just doing what it came here to do. Now, you as a good person, you say to yourself in the morning when you wake up, oh, well, tonight I'm going over to Susie's house and then I'm going for pizza and then I'm going out for a drink. Let me tell you what's actually going on there. You're given evil all day to prepare your night for you. In the game of intelligence, it's all about information. Evil wants to mess up your day. It wants to mess up your night. It wants to mess up your entire life. And every advantage it can get, it will take. Know your enemy, my friends, and that's where this video comes into play. At first, your natural response is going to be like, this is absurd. This cannot possibly be the case. But little by little, it's going to start making a whole lot more sense. You'll have one of those days where everything seems to go wrong, where people seem to be in the wrong place at the right time or at the right place at the wrong time just to mess up your day. Trust me, folks, the game is rigged. Evil knows what you're thinking in real time, and they're working against you as a group. They're a hive mind, don't you know? They're chatting amongst themselves, listening to your thoughts, plotting your demise. But honestly, would you expect anything less from the opposition? So here's what you can do to help everybody out. Be more random with your free time. Be more random with your purchases, with your plans. Be more last minute whenever possible. Encrypt your communications. Be your own counterintelligence program. The more people that become aware of what's going on, the more difficult it will be for the dark side to cope with the situation. If you're hearing this, you are the resistance. Join us for part three. Well, the cell phone operates on the same radio frequency spectrum as the human mind. Uh, that's according to Dr. Eldon Bird, who ran the radio, uh, electromagnetic uh, program for the Marine Corps. I knew that. Yeah. The electromagnetic weapons program for the you know, U.S. Marines. And that's not a coincidence that our cell phones operate on the same electromagnetic spectrum as our minds. I had my baby in the hospital. As soon as he was born, they want to give him a, a hearing test. He can't say he can hear. He can't say anything. They said, oh, we just got to hook up this computer to his mind, put these earphones on, and just run some frequencies through his head and everything. And I said... And even if they're not bad, it's that they can put Trojan horse stuff on everything. And there's a DARPA program admitting they use cell phone frequencies to, quote, calm the public during civil emergencies. Apparently, there are black boxes in the power companies that uh, produce the lily wave, and, and they're associated with, uh, you know, homeland security or whatever. And basically, these devices put ultrasonic waveform pulses uh, riding on top of the regular 60 hertz wave. And, and they are mind control waves, and they're coming into everybody's house. So the lily wave basically disarms the brain's ability to discern and decide. It just puts it in a neutral state where things just flow right in, much like the flicker of the old TV set will do. First time you watch TV, it takes about two minutes to get into that altered state. It's a, not beta, it's down in the alpha, almost theta range. You become really a zombie, and then after the first time, it's uh, a matter of seconds. The second time you watch television, and you're taken right into that state where things can pour right into your subconscious mind. So the lily wave was used first to disarm the mind, and then your theory is, and, and Lily's, and I'm sure Adam's as well, is that the lily wave was then piggybacked with any kind of known, decoded, electronic signature that would cause a reaction in the human brain and consciousness. Fascinating. Well, that is correct, and we know the signatures for every emotional state. The signature of fear, the signature of bliss, the signature of anger, all of these signatures are very easy to duplicate, recreate, and you can, uh, you know, disarm with the lily wave. It goes right in, and then you put whatever you want in there, plus whatever subliminal programming you want. You can create unrest. You can create civil unrest. You can create uh, riots. Uh, you, can, you can do anything you want. And the amazing part about it is it can also disarm the brain to the extent that the other platforms, cell towers, the Gwen Towers, Harp can also pump up and pump out any number of electronic frequencies that will then have a free ride and entree right into the human mind en masse. This is not just uh, an isolated is issue. It's a, an amazing thing to consider. We are under such control and influence that uh, the average American, the sheep, will never... Stranger than fiction news. Because truth is stranger than fiction.